Hello everyone, I am Sanjeev and I welcome all of you to lecture number 11 in machine learning channel. So this lecture will discuss the kernel tricks and specifically the algorithm kernel perceptron learning. I will discuss simple perceptron then I will discuss the voted version of the perceptron learning algorithm and finally I will introduce you to the kernel perceptron learning algorithm. So here is the MATLAB code and you can download MATLAB code for all the algorithms that I am going to discuss in this lecture. So a very first question, so a very basic question to ask is why do we need current methods? So suppose you want to solve for a certain classification problem or a regression problem, then it's tough to decide what kind of model is best for a problem. Like you need to construct the basis functions and you don't know whether the problem is linearly separable or not. Even if you know that the problem is linear, linearly separable or non-linear boundary will separate the two classes, in general it is hard to hard to decide that what kind of non-linear function is best suitable for a problem. Suppose if you know that the polynomial based functions are appropriate for the given problem then it's hard to determine the, what should be the degree of the polynomial and therefore uh, we generally introduce the kernels. The benefit of using kernel methods is that it doesn't require you to build or construct the basis functions. So let's consider example. Suppose uh, here's a problem, uh, here's a data set. Uh, the one is uh, one class is represented by the red dots and uh, red crosses and the other one is represented by the blue crosses. And as we can see this problem is quite simple and a linear boundary, this linear boundary if it's drawn like this will separate the two classes. Okay, so this is quite simple problem and we can clearly see that the linear basis functions will solve the given problem. But the complexity increases as the data sets uh, uh, as the data set becomes non-separable. Like here, two classes: one is represented by the red crosses, and other one is represented by the blue crosses. The problem is uh, definitely it's not solvable through a linear. There's a linear boundary cannot separate the two classes, and therefore uh, polynomial-based functions. We will think of the polynomial-based functions, but what kind of polynomial-based functions? What should be the degree of that polynomial? So it seems like the quadratic basis functions will uh, separate the two classes. Like uh, a curve can be drawn like this, and it can separate the two class uh, the two classes. So let us increase the complexity of the problem. So suppose this is a data set. In general, it is hard to guess that what should be the degree of the polynomial if we want to use a polynomial based functions, and what should be the degree of that polynomial. So it seems like a cubic or a degree 4 polynomial may solve this problem but again it's hard to guess and let us increase the complexity of so suppose there is a data set and we cannot make any guess that what kind of polynomial based function will separate the two classes and and there's a final data set that we'll consider so it's really really tough to determine the basis functions that can separate the two classes. So in this lecture I will uh, begin with a simple perceptron algorithm then I will discuss the voted perceptron and then finally I will discuss the kernel tricks and the kernel perceptron learning algorithm. So let us first consider the simple perceptron learning algorithm. So the problem uh, that we'll consider is a linear classification problem. Uh, the data set is linearly separable and the perceptron learning algorithm is based in, in the simplest form it is a linear classification algorithm. So suppose we are given a data set. Uh, data set is given by xi's and yi's. That is for each xi it has a target value given by the yi which can take the value either negative one or positive one which determines the class of the uh, instance xi. So if yi is 1 then the class of xi is also 1 and if yi is negative 1 then the class of xi is also negative 1. So suppose this is the data set. Uh, consider this data set. We have two classes uh, given by the red crosses and the blue crosses and the target is to 
classify these two classes that is to separate these two classes with a decision boundary or a decision hyperplane in the two dimension case the decision boundary is just a line and as we increase the dimension it will be a separating hyperplane with normal vector w so a perceptron learning algorithm adjusts its decision boundary from each error it makes on the data set or the training uh, or the training site so as i mentioned the perceptron learning algorithm learns from each wrong decision it makes on the training set so suppose if we have a training instance that is xi and yi and y learning if the algorithm classifies the training instance xi in the wrong class then it will use the training instance xi and its class yi to adjust the decision boundary and we will see the uh, learning rule for this algorithm so for each wrongly classified instance in the data set perceptron learning algorithm adjusts the decision boundary or the hyperplane with a normal vector w which is a vector in r n plus 1 here uh, x size belongs to r n and w uh, belongs to r n plus 1 we will see how uh, w belongs to r n plus 1 so a general uh, decision rule for the perceptron learning algorithm is decided by the sign of w transpose x plus b basically sign is a matlab function if w transpose x plus b is less than 0 the sign function will give you negative 1 and if w transpose x plus b is greater than 0 then the sign function will give you plus 1 so here b is a scalar w is right now a vector in rn and x is also a vector in rn so as in machine learning algorithms as i mentioned in the first lecture in machine learning in the linear regression lecture we incorporate a scalar 1 in each of the x size and the x size now becomes a vector in r n plus 1 with first component 1 and we incorporate the scalar b in the weight vector w so that w not takes the value of b and now our task is to learn this weight vector from our training data set or training set that is x size and y size so we have the class of xi is now sine of the sine function of w transpose x times xi where this uh, is the inner product of w and xi that is w transpose times xi and so suppose while learning a misclassification occurs that is uh, we initialize the weight vector w say by uh, all components 0 and now for each uh, training instance the weight vector w is adjusted if the algorithm makes an error with the current weight vector so suppose uh, initially the weight vector w is uh, have ha having all components 0 now w transpose xi will definitely give a 0 therefore this is an error because yi can take either value 1 or negative 1 so with the first training instance itself the algorithm will start updating the weight vector w so suppose a misclassification occurs that is sign of w the sign of inner product of w and xi is not equal to yi or we can say yi times inner product of w and xi is less than equal to 0 so an update is made over the weight vector w and w takes the value as w w t is equal to w t minus 1 plus y i times x i so here is example um with the first training instance that is uh, this x i obviously the w transpose in each we initialize the weight vector with all components 0 so w transpose times x will give a 0 and therefore the algorithm will add yi times xi to the vector of all zeros so this is the decision boundary the boundary shown by the zero mark that is this blue boundary is the decision boundary resulting from the first training instance